찬양 44장 마음을 부르시면서 수요배를 준비하겠습니다. 아름다운 마음 안미 찬양 113장 위로를 찬양하시겠습니다. 
주시는 내 눈물 닦아주시는 주님의 사랑으로 오늘도 내가 갑니다 주님 주신 사명이 사랑으로 오늘도 기도합니다 주님 뜻이워지기내 마음 아시는 주님 모든 것 살리시네 오늘도 내일도 항상 내가 살아가도록 내 마음 아시는 찬송가 468장을 찬양하시겠습니다 다같이 묵도하심으로 수요예배를 
study with the silent prayer. Let us offer Wednesday service to Father God. That a man regard us in this manner as servants of Christ and as stewards of the mysteries of God. In this case, moreover, it is required of stewards that one be found trustworthy. Amen. Let's sing hymn number 372. A charge to keep I have, a God to glorify. A never dying soul to save in the fitty for the sky. To serve the pres present age, my calling to fulfill. Oh, may all my powers engage to do my master's will. Arm me with jealous care, jealous care, as in thy sight to live. And O oh, thy servant, O oh Lord, prepare a strict account to give. Help me to watch and pray, and still on thee rely. Oh, let me not my trust betray, but press to worms on high. Amen. Let's pray for a couple of topics. First of all, let's pray for senior pastor. 사랑의 아버지 하나님 은혜와 사랑에 감사를 드립니다. 일찍이 사랑한 목자님을 통하여서 귀한 재단을 세우시고 민족 복음화와 세계 선교의 비전을 허락해 주시며 또큰 부흥으로 역사해 주셔서 전국 및전 세계 성결의 오중 복음을 증거하는 재단으로 축복하여 주신 것을 감사를 드립니다. 변함없으신 권능과 생명의 말씀을 통하여서 마지막 때 본재단을 향하신 아버지 하나님의 귀한 섭리를 창대히 이루시고 영광받아 주옵소서 당장임을 통해 증거해 주신 창조주 하나님과 구세주 되신 예수 그리스도의 사랑이 전하 만민에게 더욱 널리 전파되어 모든 영혼이 구원에 이르기를 원하신 아버지 하나님의 뜻이 온전히 이룰 수 있도록 축복해 주시옵소서 우리 주 예수 그리스도 이름으로 기도하옵소서 In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ I pray. Amen. Let's pray for construction of the Grand Sanctuary. 감사드립니다. 만세전에 인간 경작을 기획하시고 그 섭리를 변함없이 이루어 가심을 감사를 드립니다. 만민을 통해 인간 경작의 승리의 상징물로 이루실 성전 건축의 섭리 또한 한치 오차 없이 이루실 줄을 믿나이다. 대성전 건축을 통해 어둠이 가득한 이 마지막 때에 아버지 하나님을 더욱 기쁘시게 해드리며 아버지 하나님의 영광을 전 세계에 드러내는 만민이 되게 역사해 주옵소서 성전 이전도 그 절차와 과정을 친히 인도해 주옵시며 앞서 일한 일꾼들에게도 지혜와 능 in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. Let's pray for Pastor Ha Kyung Im, who is preaching the message tonight. And then Pastor Mi Kyung Hwang will pray for the service on our behalf. Father God, thank you for protecting us in the wisdom of our Lord, and thank you for leading us to worship you through this Wednesday service. Thank you for setting up our precious shepherd and for attesting our shepherd's power. Father, through our senior pastor, the blind came to see the deaf. He came to hear and the mute came to speak through the amazing power. So many 
people came to have spiritual faith and then they experience the living God and give glory to you. Father, thank you for this grace. For 40 years, you have been leading us, m a m i n with the pillar of clouds and the pillar of fire. Until we celebrate the 40th anniversary, we cannot forget the grace and sacrifice of our senior pastor. We are grateful for the love of our senior pastor. Also, so that we can watch and pray and receive the strength from above and experience the works of power. Our Mrs. Bong Lim Lee led to pray. We are grateful to her too. Through our acting senior pastor, you bless us to experience your power unchangingly, and you bless us to stand firm on the word of life and run towards New Jerusalem. We are grateful to you, our acting senior pastor, to you. Now, let us all become one with our acting senior pastor and obey with yes and amen so that we can accomplish all your will and providence towards m a m i n Father, please work on us. Starting from the 40th anniversary, let us m a m i n the new lip. Father God, please be glorified greatly through the ministry of m a m i n Please bless Pastor Ha Kyung Yim, who is preaching the message tonight. Please fill him with the Holy Spirit, giving him the power of the Word. Please hold him with the hands of our shepherd. Please bless Pastor Jin Young Chung, who is presiding at the service. And please bless all the members who are attending this service through GCN and Internet throughout the world. Please, please give them grace and impression. And please be glorified by the anthem of Golden Light Choir. There are helping hands for this service. Please bless them with the heavenly rewards and the blessings on this earth. Please be glorified alone through this service. Thank you. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. Scripture reading is Romans chapter 12, verse 2. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, so that you may prove what the will of God is, that which is good and acceptable and perfect. Amen. There will be God my choir's praise, and then Pastor Ha g y u n g Im will pre- preach the message entitled, Good Children.
Loving brothers and sisters in Christ, today I'd like to preach the message entitled Good Children based on the senior pastor's sermon in 2008. First of all, I'll tell you why you should become good children. Forty years ago, at the beginning of the church, senior pastor had only 7,001. When we had the first service with nine adults and four children in a sanctuary of about 33 square meters, we didn't have the pulpit, microphone, choir, or anything. But we had a spiritual faith to believe in the Almighty God. We also had a dream and vision given by God. It was to preach the providence of salvation of the cross to all peoples of the world, like the waters that cover the sea. The other providence is to construct the most beautiful grand sanctuary to declare the glory of the Creator God all throughout the earth. These dreams became clearer and clearer as the days went by, and God has been opening the ways to fulfill them. Now we have many branch churches and countless members around the globe. Also, we are fulfilling the world mission through GCN and publication ministry. Through this, even in the places we cannot reach directly, so many people hear the Holiness Gospel and experience the power. And we had the, the Divine Healing Meeting last Friday. Not only the members in the St. Churches, but also the members in other countries like India or uh, the countries in the South uh, America, they were healed immediately and they uh, reported their testimonies. Well, the, the word is um, the one day um, range of life, but, and uh, the people are. Uh, can know the news and hear the news um, in a day, whatever happens in the world. But well, predominantly Islam or Hindu countries where it's difficult to preach the gospel, or in Europe, which is thirsty for the works of the Holy Spirit, and in Africa that is in desperate need of uh, God's grace, and at the end of earth, Israel, so many people experience God's works and send their testimonies. But our church will not be satisfied with what we have accomplished, but we will broaden our areas even more. Until the Lord comes again, we will spread the word of God and power of God to guide countless souls to God. It's because this is the will of God towards us, Ma'amin. And there is a condition to me to fulfill the will of God. Like today's sermon title, we have to become good children. Those Christians who really love God have to cast away sins and evil from their heart. When one becomes such a child, God rejoices over him so much, and God gives answers to anything he asks. He gives abundant blessings both in spirit and body. And through these good children, the kingdom of God can be enlarged, enlarged more, even more greatly. God's kingdom cannot be accomplished with the ways and wisdom of the world, but through spiritual authority and power. So, when pastors become good children of God, they can receive the power of God, and the church growth will be very easy. Our church's 40th anniversary, anniversary day is coming near. At this time, when I tell you about good children, I hope you all become good children who resemble God and glorify Him. I pray in the name of the Lord that the grace of God that has been within our church for the last 40 years will also be overflowing in your lives. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, the good children that God wants, first of all, are those who do not have fleshly thoughts. To become one without fleshly thoughts, we first have to know what fleshly thoughts are.
While we're listening to the message about voice and guidance of the Holy Spirit, uh, we came to understand how to break down the flesh thoughts. Well, flesh is the sinful nature combined with the body, and fleshly thought is all kinds of thoughts that are generated by the sinful nature in the heart. Easily put, all untruthful thoughts and evil thoughts are fleshly thoughts. On the other hand, the thoughts that are generated by good attributes in the heart are spiritual thoughts. God wants His children to have only spiritual thoughts and not the fleshly thoughts. Romans 8, 6, and 7 say, For the mindset on the flesh is death, but the mindset on the spirit is life and peace, because the mindset on the flesh is hostile towards God, for it does not subject itself to the law of God, for it is not even able to do so. People cause pain to themselves or to others because of fleshly thoughts that are different from the facts. Even in situations that are not really offensive, they become offended because of their own fleshly thoughts. Also, they may pass judgment and even condemnation on others. By doing so, the peace is broken, and furthermore, they may even have quarrels and arguments. For example, there is a woman who still has pride and envy. She thinks that uh, she is recognized and loved by others more than they love one of her friends. And one day, only her friend was invited to an important meeting. This woman was very curious about this meeting and asked her friend what happened there. But her friend, without telling her what had happened there in detail, only said it was okay. This seems that she is avoiding, avoiding the woman's question. In this case, this woman may become offended, thinking her friend is not treating her as she deserves to be treated. Also, because her friend was invited while she was not, she may think her friend is looking down on her. If this kind of thought develops, she may even condemn her friend, th thinking she was become very arrogant. Then she may even convey her thoughts to others. In this case, what this woman thinks right is what this woman thinks right. It is quite far from the truth. Most of her thoughts were fleshly thoughts that were generated from the untruth in her heart. The arrogance, envy, jealousy, and other things work together to generate this kind of fleshly thoughts. Maybe her friend could not tell her in detail about the meeting because she was not supposed to talk about it, not because she looked down on anybody. Or maybe she really didn't have anything to say other than it's okay, it was okay. Perhaps something not good happened in the meeting and she didn't want to talk about it, so she could, she could only say it was okay. If this woman had understood her um, uh, understood her friends and stand for into her heart, she wouldn't have been offended. She wouldn't have judged or condemned her friend. Even if she didn't know her friend's standpoint, she could just, just think in goodness and in spirit. Therefore, we can understand that fleshly thoughts do not come from anybody else but only from our own evil. Most people cause pains to themselves because of their own fleshly thoughts. Also, they judge and condemn and even slander, causing quarrels and dissensions that break peace. God wants His children to have spiritual thoughts, not fleshly thoughts. Whatever we see or hear, God wants us to understand in goodness and have good thoughts and good deeds. In the above situation, even if the woman didn't hear the answer she wanted, she could have just said something warm from a warm heart. She didn't have to think any more than that, and she could have just been satisfied with what, was she, what she was doing. 
Also, being disappointed is also a fleshly attribute. Those who have spiritual thought will never doubt God until the end. Once they believed, that belief goes to the end. When they encounter a difficult situation or feel their shortcomings, they more earnestly ask for God's strength. Until we have m a m i n Central Church of today, for the last 40 years, we sometimes had great difficulties. But our senior pastor has never dismayed or doubted God. He only had thoughts of faith and confessions of faith. And God drove away all the hardships according to His thoughts. He gave us blessings through the hardships. That way, God let us accomplish the kingdom of God more greatly and receive the glory. through m a m i through our senior pastor. However, there are times when people think that they are having good thoughts while they are actually having fleshly thoughts. For example, suppose a person starts thinking that he only has minor duties, so he becomes a little disappointed with himself and then thinks, I'm not capable of taking on greater duties. Even concerning the duty he has right now, he is willing to quit at any time thinking that somebody else will do it better than he is doing. At this time, if he is abandoning his duty without any selfish motive, purely thinking about the kingdom of God, then his heart will be full of peace and joy. But his heart is not full of peace and joy. Rather, he is sad and troubled. He says that he abandons the duty for the sake of God's kingdom. But the fact is that he is disheartened and disappointed about his inability. We have, well, He should not put the blame on the church or God. We have to acknowledge that being disappointed is also a fleshly attribute. Therefore, wanting to abandon one's duty is also a fleshly thought coming from fleshly mind. Those who have spiritual thoughts more earnestly ask for God's strength when they feel their shortcomings and feelings of incompetence. They will have thoughts and true confessions of faith until the end, saying, not by my might, but with the power of God, I can do it. Those who have spiritual thoughts and good thoughts will not have any misunderstanding in anything. So, it's easy to unite hearts and work comfortably with others. Now, I hope more of you will cast off fleshly thoughts completely and have only spiritual thoughts. In doing so, I pray in the name of the Lord that you will come forth as precious workers who will accomplish important works of God. Loving members, the second aspect of good children of God is good children give comfort to others' hearts, other people's hearts. The good children that God wants have generous and broad heart and treat others with good and gentle heart. We have to care for others in everything. This is the heart of the Lord. Our acting senior pastor, whatever happens, she always relies on God. While dealing with the works, uh, matters of, of the church, she doesn't even tell her mother about those things because he didn't want to share the suffering. There are so many uh, burdens she is taking, but she didn't. She doesn't um, put the, those burdens to her own family. But she only relies on God and prays to God, leading. 
so many members in the world. There are so many things, but always she uh, considers others and uh, treats them with love, with goodness and love. We should do like this. If you serve like with the heart of the Lord, you will be uh, touched by such actions. Don't you feel touched about just by remembering the Lord who is gentle, humble, and full of goodness and love and service? Also, when you think of somebody who resembles God, your heart is warmed up and you feel happy. We have to resemble this Lord. And we have to resemble our senior pastor and acting senior pastor. If you are like this, uh, then you will be able to give glory to God with your good deeds, as it says in Matthew 5, 16. Let your light shine before men in such a way that they may see your good works and glorify your Father who is in heaven. The reason why this church could grow up like today is because the members have been trying to resemble the Lord. It's comfortable to interact with those who, are, those who have good hearts. On the other hand, it's not comfortable to interact with those who have evil hearts. Their feelings are hurt even with small things, and their evil shows in their facial expressions, a tone of voice, and their actions. In Korea, say, in Korea, there is a saying that uh, the other's bread uh, looks bigger. When you uh, bought some rice cakes from a, um, a rice cake store, uh, but not all of the pieces have the same size. And someone says that uh, the, either, the other's uh, piece uh, uh, looks, looks bigger. Then, if such a person is around you, will you uh, feel comfortable with, her, with him or her? You will always have to care about that person. Even if they say it's okay with them, the people around them um, can feel the uncomfortable feelings from them. Therefore, we should realize that we cause discomfort to others as much as we have evil in our hearts. Arrogance is to consider ourselves better than others. And therefore, he who is arrogant cannot unite his heart with others in doing some work together. He thinks that his opinion is better than others' opinions, and he insists that they follow his way. Also, his words and actions show that he looks down on others. That causes others' feelings to be hurt or even break their hearts. No one thinks this kind of person nice nor wants to be with him. Some people have listened to the word of God for a long time, so they don't show their arrogance on the outside. But when they have a position in the church and they have authority behind them, their arrogance is exposed. Suppose a person has become the leader of an organization. Being elected as the leader means that his work was officially recognized as being better than the work of others. Also, he may have to exercise a certain authority for the order of the organization. Therefore, in proceeding with a certain work, the leader may propose his idea and insist that every uh, one follow it. When uh, the leader is able to quickly make a judgment on the situation and proceeds with the work with determination, sometimes people say he has good leadership skill. But when the leader exercises this kind of strong leadership, 
Some people in that organization may feel uncomfortable about it. They may feel that the leader is being too coercive and commanding. They follow him because the work itself is for the kingdom of God and to save souls, but they do it by feeling forced. They do not voluntarily follow the leader. This kind of situation happens when the leader does not work with his own righteousness and frameworks uh, that is connected with the evil attribute called arrogance. But those who are really good in heart do not cause any difficulties or troubles for other workers, no matter how high their positions go up and how much authority they have. It's because they have the humbleness, the opposite of attribute of arrogance. Those who are humble consider others better than themselves, and they serve everybody in everything. They become the leader not because of physical and fleshly attributes like knowledge or experience, but by the word of God that says, the one who serves is the greater. They respect and serve even very lowly persons from the heart. They don't judge or condemn even those who have committed sins. They think from the viewpoint of others and have mercy on the weak-mindedness of others. They treat others with love and generosity in all things and show grace to them. They store up good deeds that come from a good heart for everybody in all matters. According to the amount of goodness stored, the other people's hearts will be turned towards this humble leader. So, when uh, this leader wants to do something for the kingdom of God, and many people would volunteer to do it, even if he simply mentions it in passing. Even though the work itself is physically demanding, uh, they want to participate with joy. Please, if you are a person who gives comfort to your family members, colleagues, or other workers, or by any chance you are giving them any discomfort. Please check. If a man has a very good heart, other people will feel the warmth just by thinking about it. They can gain strength through him, thinking that uh, thinking that is how a man of God should be. I hope you will become such good workers and lead a great many souls into goodness. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, the third aspect is that good children of God seek uh, the benefit of others. The nature of goodness is to give and share. Those who have goodness abundantly in their heart will keep on giving their possessions. They do not seek their own benefit, but the benefit of others, and they are always considerate of others. On the other hand, the evil nature tries to hold on to one's own things while taking even more. Whether it is wealth, fame, or social power, it's all the same. They feel like they will live, they, they will live only when they hold on to those things. But God the Father has given His beloved Son to save sinners. It was not just a simple death, but He took the wretched sufferings of the cross. God sacrificed Himself completely for sinners. The reason why God could do it was because God is goodness itself. Therefore, when he sees his children seek the benefit of others, he is very pleased. Furthermore, when he sees his children sacrificing themselves for others, he will be moved in his heart. I urge you to check whether you are really good children who seek the benefit of others through the following example. This case is when the result of your work or the event you took charge was either good or bad. In case of men of flesh, when they achieve something in their work or duty, they give the credit to themselves. On the other hand, they try to shift the blame to others and they try they tend to shirk accepting responsibility if something goes wrong. But a good child of God will not do that. When the result is good, he gives the credit to other workers and gives thanks to them from the heart. He doesn't do it thinking that 
acting that way is goodness because he truly considers each co-worker precious. He gives thanks to them. If the result of the task is not good, he doesn't put the blame on anybody else but himself. Even though it is evident that it was because of somebody else's fault, he thinks, I should have cared for him more. I should have strengthened, strengthened him more than he could have done better. Also, in taking responsibility for his work, he can accept any kind of disadvantage toward him. If another weaker person is able to survive without losing his strength, he would sacrifice of himself by taking the responsibility. This is what a man of goodness who seeks others' benefits, not his own, will do. Since the opening of the church, our senior pastor has always given glory to God for all the good things that took place. Next, he gave thanks to the people who worked together. When there was a problem, he first repented before God, saying, God, it's all my fault. I taught them wrong, and I didn't care for them enough. And he offered with all his heart peace offerings to have peace with God completely. In Colossians 1.24, the Apostle Paul confessed, Now I rejoice in my sufferings for your sake, and in my flesh I do my share on behalf of his body, which is the church, in filling up what is lacking in Christ's afflictions. The Apostle Paul could willingly take any kind of hardship or sufferings if only the souls could revive and the church of the Lord could increase. Today, we are in desperate need of workers who can willingly sacrifice themselves for the souls in the kingdom of God. If one's good work is not revealed, if, and if he is frequently taking the responsibility for the things that went wrong, others may think less of them. But God who sees the heart will say, such a person is really good. God will consider him to be a great vessel. For the remainder of this year, I hope you will be acknowledged by God as truly good vessels. Loving brothers and sisters in Christ, let me conclude the message. Until now, our senior pastor and acting senior pastor has been doing their best to accomplish God's will. God's will. Our members who listen to the messages uh, prayed to become good children of God and for the 7.8 billion people of the world and tried our best to preach the gospel. Then, God worked for this church to accomplish His kingdom greatly and let us bear many fruits. We began with 13 members, and now we established a mega-sized church preaching the gospel to the whole world. Since the opening of our church, through our senior pastor's prayer, the blind came to see, the deaf and mute came to hear and speak, and the lame came to walk. So many works of God's power have been manifested. Especially from the year 2000 to 2006, we had 12 mega-sized crusades in many other countries, like in the Uganda, Kenya, Philippines, and Germany, and Honduras, and USA and other countries. In these crusades, hundreds of thousands or, or even millions of people gathered. Also, our senior pastor's Israel ministry, started in 2007, was done for 777 days and beautiful fruits were born. The 2009 Jerusalem Crusade was really touching. Do you remember that touching moment? How happy you were if you attended the, the crusade um, at the scene. I was so proud to be the pastor of Mami Central Church. When senior pastor proclaimed Jesus as our senior pastor from the altar, and when he preached how God um, 
guarantee that works of power um, but at the time uh, there are many people who suffered from um, a flu and uh, swine flu and uh, after a uh, senior pastor prayed that it was ended and we heard that news uh, from uh, the media and uh, the Israel was um, uh, suffering from drought and the people in Israel uh, used water from the Galilee but uh, the water level uh, became so low and the trees were dried up and uh, they uh, suffered a lot and at some time our senior pastor prayed to give rain to God and then immediately God gave rain so the drought in Israel was uh, resolved and senior pastor prayed once again and then the rain um, it rained enough so that they didn't have to ask for more prayer well those crises were um, we uh, gave a great glory to Father God through those crises also even at the Marina each uh, beach of Chennai India where a total of 3 million people gathered and at Mar Manhattan Medicine Square Garden in New York City and uh, the powerful works of God took place in the same way God manifested the same fiery works of the Holy Spirit in Europe Asia and many African countries and wherever our senior pastor stepped on in the world. After our senior pastor conducted a crusade that country, in that country, the Christianity revived. Our senior pastor said that there were so many things for us mamin to do until the Lord's return. I urge but today's reading passage, Romans 12, 2 says, And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, so that you may prove what the will of God is, that which is good and acceptable and perfect. We must be renewed of our mind and prove what the will of God is, as it says. Therefore, the good children that God wants are like this. First, they do not have flesh with us. Second, they give comfort to others. Third, they seek the benefit of others. If we understand the good, good will of God like this, it is the pleasing will of God to practice what we know. All pastors and workers, if you have uh, uh, such a good heart, how happy and spirit-filled our church members would be. If all of our work workers have such a good heart, what a great strength we, they would become for the church and the senior pastor. I pray in the name of the Lord that you will take this message as life and strength and come forth as good children whom God desires. Let's pray thinking over the message. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. Let's sing Mammin Praise number 64 and give our offerings.
Pastor Ha Kyung Im will pray for the offerings. Father God, we give tithes, thanksgiving, charity, and some support in other offerings, all, as well as for missionary works. Also, we give sanctuary construction, just in broadcasting, vote, and special offerings. Please accept them and lay your hands on them so that a good measure may be poured into our lap. Please fulfill our heart's desires and answer our prayers and petitions. Please protect our homes, work, and businesses. Bless us so that our ties increase and there is reasons for Thanksgiving may overflow. Bless us 30, 60, or 100 times according to what we've done and sown. Lord, thank you. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. Let's pray the Lord's Prayer to end the service. Our Father who is in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. And do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For you are the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.